I did build Landmark Control, so I think that that deck might also be pretty copium. Oh god, Poppy El Evelyn. The husks get buffed and then you give their stats to, or to someone else or you give Poppy a keyword and then you just get annihilated. Um, we're going to mulligan... Hmm. Slurry Soldier's good if I hit Stygian and Onlooker. I think we have to be aggressive in this matchup, so I'll keep one Solari Soldier. Would you be tr willing to try Dragon Gwen soon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After this, we'll play Gw uh, Dragon Gwen. We'll see how it goes. Hmm. To open attack or to Solari Soldier. We don't have anything to, like, follow up with if we do. So I think we just attack, we play Nightfall style. We just take our two damage here. We float our mana to do something better down the road. Honestly, this is a pretty awkward uh, opening hand to begin with. Maybe the Ayula doesn't matter. Maybe Ayula does need to become a second uh, conductor. A three mana four two that uh, stacks your hollowed also gives you an ephemeral one drop that you can use to rock your Nightfall and then that dies and also stacks your hollowed. Summon a random husk, grant it plus one attack. Oh my god! No! That's broken! Oh no! <laughs> no! Overwhelm! No! Lord have mercy on my soul. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. All right, we're going to throw down the soldier and pale cascade. Uh, we've got Gwen. Do we go Gwen or do we go wide? Because we can do Dusk Petal Dust, Stygian Crescent Guardian, and put down a lot of pressure here. We don't have Hallowed stacked up, so the Gwen doesn't matter. We also haven't taken any damage, so the Drain doesn't matter as much. Yeah, I, th I think that this is the play. And this also gives us a lot of pressure if they're thinking about setting up Poppy this turn. We can maybe force them to block down. Vora... Hus can't block, so we do have a very, a very good swing here. And I don't mind giving the value trade with the Broadwing. Yeah, trading one for one into the Crescent Guardian seems good. I'm going to Pale Cascade, though. Keep this alive as a 5-1. We draw a card. This is another game where we haven't gotten Hallowed High Roll. Like, no boisterous hosts or anything. We got the follow from Captain Fab. Thank you and welcome to the knighthood, Captain Fab. Welcome in. There's boisterous host. No, that would be broken. Oh my god, Dawn Speakers with the husks? Get that out of here, no. I think I do want to throw down a Gwen. Oh, yikes. Okay, we'll wait till they attack and then we'll play Gwen. We trade Boisterous Host. Oh my god. Another Boisterous Host. If we formal invitation, we get back... Uh, Crescent Guardian and Solari Soldier. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, formal invitation is so good. It's very easy to just, like, rig it. I, it might need, it might be open attack. Because Gwen is quick attack, so we do pretty well into the Broadwing. Because if they play, like, an Evelyn, it, it might be pretty bad for me. Dawn Speakers is good again. I mean, we'll see. 
We'll see if Dawn Speaker's Eve is good again. Because Dawn Spiders actually did climb pretty high in the NA ladder earlier this season. It was it was a uh, Dawn Speaker like it was uh spiders, so it was like Poppy Elise. No, 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 no. This is uh Evelyn Poppy with Dawn Speaker. The idea is just to like snowball with stats and then use the husk to give your stuff keywords. And look at this, the boisterous host, like, being left alive. Nice rally. Oh, not killing the Gwen. I can thread the needle to kill this Broadwing. Now I've got Doom Beast in my death pool for formal invitation. Double form of invitation, two shots of getting Doom Beast for the lethal here. And I can do it before these die so it doesn't muddy up my pool. Ah, yeah. Come on. Oh my god. Damn, okay. Tragic. We're about to get we're about to get hallowed crescent guard another rally We were peaceful once In the name of the fallen What region did Kaisa land in? Um I just played against Kaisa Freljord and Kaisa Sharima, you know, just with like Akshan is fine. So, Gwen just attacks and deals two to the Nexus. They have to have single combat here. Another rally! <laughs> Jesus, okay. If they got, I think, like, Poppy <laughs> or Evelyn, I think they win, but... Gonna mulligan those away. Look for, there we go, Boisterous Host. I think we actually do Boisterous Host on uh, turn one. Let me think. Yeah, we do Boisterous Host on turn one. That way we trade and then like we can play Diana on two, trade the Boisterous Host, and then on turn three, potentially activate Diana's Nightfall and she's hallowed. Slater is fine. They don't attack. So now I can do Solari Soldier Diana. Just an early pressure. And again, the thing about the husks is, yeah, you're you're just developing and then. Hmm, I might kill this husk actually. Overwhelm husk kind of spooky. I think that's a fine plan. By removing the husks, we also kind of just work around uh, Evelyn doing things to us. We get our hallowed uh, stack, so Diana's going to become a big threat for just keeping the board under control. She ba One hallowed stack turns Diana into Broadwing, right? Quick attack Broadwing, and then we just, we just run it. We can do Dusk Petal Dusk Crescent Guardian if we want. 
Especially if they take a slow turn here. Unspeakable Horror Crescent Guardian might be correct. We kill this 3-1. Like, if they attack us, we Unspeakable Horror to not take the 3 damage. Ah, oh, Merciless Hunter. We have we have second Diana, though, so that's actually not that bad. Thinking about how I want to play this. It's a one-for-one -one trade. I could play Crescent Guardian and then Unspeakable Horror and get a card. Then next turn, we Dusk Petal Dust Diana. I like it. We get the follow from uh, Dagar Selbon. Thank you and welcome to the Knighthood Dagon. That's also another Nightfall proc for Diana's level up. Moonlight Affliction is a godlike pickup. This open attack is looking really tasty, to be honest. Because even if we get, like, Diana down, what's that? Ooh, Fading Memories? Ooh, let's get spicy. Let's see what's in the box for us, chat. I'll give impact to my Diana. I'm down to get I'm down to get squeaky. No more lies. Sick nasty. Um Diana gets we do have one hallowed stack. So we can Put it on the Crescent Guardian. And then Diana just clears this husk to prevent the Evelyn level up. Attack with the rest. Yeah. Evelyn having counterplay. Killing the husks. Impact on Diana. Plus one HP is kind of cheeky. I was hoping to get something really busted. This is, it's like getting baited into fading memories on the Sultur is so funny to me, but at the same time, the high roll potential is just like too good. And by attacking like this, we're still safe versus quicksand. Gwen, okay. Popping off. And what's great about Gwen is that with Nocturne, you want to do this, that, and the other. But with Gwen, you it's just a four drop. You just play her. You don't have to like jump through hoops or worry about her getting answered. Four HP is just so much better than three HP in this game. It's not even close. I accept your offer of just taking four damage there. And then with Moonlight Affliction, we deal, because of the one Hallowed proc, which Gwen shares, we deal 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage with the uh, Moonlight Affliction here. Oh, plus a little more because uh, Diana levels up. So 16 damage. We also have Unto Dusk to counter Quicksand. My draws were kind of godlike that game. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> it's gonna be a rock, paper, scissors of, uh, uh, like, Ephemeral Gwen beats, you know, non-Sharima decks. Frostbite Gwen beats the Bard version, maybe. And then the Bard version beats everything else. We finally get Boisterous Host. We can play Boisterous Host on one. Duskbringer on two. We don't need Solari Soldier. Because we don't have, like, a... Uh, like, Stygian or anything. Oh, man, there's the Stygian, actually. Nice, we're actually high rolling finally. The other two, the other games we've won with this deck, we uh, didn't draw any uh, boisterous hosts or like or our conductors. The the P and Z Gwen I built was trying to run like iterative improvement with like Doom Beast and stuff. 
Evelyn Kindred. Wasn't it confirmed that when husks die, it doesn't activate Kindred? Maybe, maybe Peps doesn't know. Oh, uh, strike up the band? Probably? It's hard to say. It gives us, like, other- it gives us additional defensive potential. I think my opponent's on Vile Feast. I'm gonna play Crescent Guardian. Put the Hallowed buff on this boy. And I just got a 2-1 that I get to keep hitting them with over and over again. So let's see if they have the Kindred on curve. Let's see how this uh, interaction works. It's not a slay. Confirmed. We play this because it's a fearsome blocker. Man, if that was a real interaction, though. Um. We'll play Boisterous Host first. To see to see if they tap down under Vengeance. Peps won't, though. Peps just passes here, like, a 100% a of the time. The only re the only reason you would never ta you would pass here is if you are afraid of like Diana. But even if I have Diana, it's not that bad. If Pepsi's hand is bad and needs this kindred to survive and is worried about Diana, then if if I have Diana, then you vengeance anyway. So you always pass. Greed. Oh, they had the host to proc the Evelyn. I wasn't thinking about that either. So we've got three hallowed deaths. So Gwen goes up to a six attack. Because if we attack with, with Boisterous Host, then it gets hit and then slain. So we just have to attack with solo Gwen here. So Peps drew triple hosts and so did I. <laughs> so now we're pod racing. This is pod racing chat. Oh, I forgot fearsome, right? I could pale here if I wanted to. Let's do that. Sure. Husk helps Thresh, Callista, and Lucian. Anything else? Uh, I saw someone trying Poppy. It, like, if she gets the extra HP, it's really good. Like, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of champions like that. We, be, we should be able to pump up this Diana enough to take down the Kindred. But they're set up with the uh, Fading Husk, which is just not good. Lifesteal husk? Oh, right. Solitude gives it a random keyword. Yeah, the Evelyn decks, like, it feels like playing against, like, Bannerman, where, like, if they draw the units they need in the right order, then it just, like, really pops off. But I think this is just going to keep, like, Jace Heimerdinger in the meta, where you just need to draw, like, Triple Vengeance and you win those sorts of games. That's what it's looking like to me, Triple Vengeance. Because this deck doesn't have any protection, right? You've got Mist's Call, but the Husks interfere with that. Maybe Haunted Tomb. Yeah. 
Culling Strike would be cute. Like if Noxus, uh, Froljord Frostbites come back, like people are like trying to play Yeti with the training pits and stuff. Oh, that's right. Last win counts as a one drop for Solitude. Very cute. Is it me or does Evelyn kind of feel like Viego? Yeah, yeah, similar like mechanical things happening. I cannot turn back. Just a little bit short on procs to take down the uh, the Kindred. We get another card draw off of the flight, however, so they don't get the Kindred mark. And if I attack with Gwen, they block with the Kindred. And I could thread the needle. If they don't have Vile Feast, I could try to thread the needle and cheese out Onlooker. And if I'm attacking like this, it kind of gives it away. Oh, wait, no. Hallowed buffs. Wait, no. I I'm forgetting about Hallowed buffs. Gwen gets big enough. Gwen gets big enough. So hate spike, kill an ally to deal two to a unit, summon a random husk, and then glimpse beyond to deny my Gwen level up. She still levels because of Snip Snip, I thought. Yeah, yeah, she still levels up. Um, so we can thread the needle. Ooh. Onto the kindred. Let's go. And my opponent's out of cards. I don't have to worry about Vile Feast here. Yo, we're playing Runeterra? Hang on. We're we're playing Runeterra. Let's go. Both enemy champions down. Gwen leveling. I'm out of cards as well. Down to a top deck war. Okay, Peps, I see you. Hey god. Surrendered! They didn't get anything off the glimpse! I would draw one more card before conceding, I think. 